Well, what's up again, viewers? Bruce is Brian, the Three Topics Gamer, here to present my fifth versus series matchup for my final season. And this time I'll be pitting the Crusader Dante from the Dante Inferno video game against the Knight of the Brotherhood of Light, Gabriel Belmont, to see which one of these two would take the other one down. Now, before I begin, I would just like to state that for my research sources, when it comes to Dante, I'll be pulling from his appearances in both the video game as well as the animated film. However, because there are conflicting story elements earlier on when it comes to the telling of the story between the game and the movie, I will be taking elements from both as there are certainly some details that I prefer in the movie over the game and in some sections there are some elements that I would prefer the game over the movie. Now, when it comes to Gabriel Belmont, I will be pulling from his appearances from Castlevania Lord of Shadows 1 only. Therefore, I will not be taking any of his abilities or feats that he has performed once he made the transition into becoming Dracula. So with that out of the way, let's break these two down, and we will start by going over Dante first. Dante was a Christian knight who fought under the command of King Richard the Lionheart during the Third Crusade. Before leaving the capture the city of Jerusalem, Dante vowed to marry his longtime love Beatrix when he returned, and promised that he would look after her younger brother Francesco. In return, Beatrix would give Dante a cross that was said to hold a thorn from the crown of Christ. After the Christian forces had successfully captured the city of Acre, Dante was ordered to keep guard over 3,000 prisoners. These prisoners were meant to be used as a way to negotiate with Saladin to recover the true cross. However, as the negotiations dragged on, the food supply within the city depleted quickly, and not wanting to stay in the city, in his bloodlust, Dante would order the prisoners to be slaughtered. When King Richard discovered what had happened, he was furious and demanded to know what happened, and realizing that Dante was set for execution, Francesco took the blame for what Dante had done and was immediately executed. With Francesco dead, Dante raced back home as quickly as he could, only to discover that everyone, including Beatrix, had been murdered. As Beatrix's soul began to rise to heaven, she was immediately taken by Lucifer down to hell, and discovering a doorway to hell, Dante would follow Lucifer into the inferno. From that point on, Dante would fight his way through the nine circles of hell, which are limbo, lust, gluttony, greed, anger, heresy, violence, fraud, and treachery. After saving Beatrix's soul in the eighth circle of fraud, Dante would make his way to the final circle where he would battle and defeat Lucifer, trapping him once again in the ninth circle. Dante would then jump through a circle of light and would find himself in the realm of purgatory, and though it is not officially seen what happened afterwards, it is believed that he would be rejoined with his love Beatrix in paradise. When it comes to his collection of weapons, Dante would be bringing two into this engagement. His primary melee weapon is a scythe that Dante recovered after defeating death. The scythe is a purely unholy weapon and has the ability to shift its form in various ways, which includes growing and shrinking when he needs to grab, slash, and impale his enemies. He can also change it into a straight spear and extend it into a hook chain, or even collapse into the blade and attach it to Dante's arm. And it also has been used to act as a grappling hook, allowing Dante to swing from one location to the other. With the power of the collected souls that Dante had acquired, he has enhanced the strength and power of this weapon, and he has even been able to use this weapon to drain mana from his opponents. The second weapon that he will be using is the cross that Beatrix gave him. It is a purely holy weapon and is highly effective against the unholy opponents and demons especially. Its primary attack that Dante uses to attack enemies at a distance is the ability to fire crosses of holy magic at his opponents. With the power of the souls that Dante has acquired, he has upgraded the cross to such a degree that it has even allowed Dante to recover health when he defeats a demon. Over the course of his journey through the Nine Circles, Dante has shown a heightened prowess of physical feats far above that of a normal mortal. He has displayed superhuman levels of strength and speed, and has shown to have developed heightened reflexes allowing him to dodge attacks from multiple directions and perform physical maneuvers that helped him journey through the Nine Circles. Dante has also received several magical abilities that can aid him in battle. Righteous Path allows Dante to charge at an opponent and fire a trail of ice shards to force the enemy back. Sins of the Father allows Dante to fire a magical golden cross that can target an enemy and continue to attack them over a short period of time. 
Suicide Fruit allows Dante to slam the ground with such force that it stuns all nearby enemies. Matadorm allows Dante to sacrifice some of his own health to fire off a powerful blast of unholy magic. Lust Storm allows Dante to summon a vortex of pink lightning and wind to protect Dante and keep enemies at bay. And his final ability, known as Divine Armor, protects Dante from all damage while recovering his health at the same time. However, despite having so many abilities at his disposal, Dante only has a limited amount of mana that he can carry at any one time. Now time to go over Gabriel Belmont. Gabriel was found by the Brotherhood of Light, and when he was older, he gave himself the last name Belmont due to his love of the mountains. He would spend his early years training to fight demons and monsters of all kinds, and he would eventually go on to marry a woman named Marie, and while Gabriel was away on one of his missions, Marie would give birth to their son, Trevor Belmont, who would be secretly taken and trained by the Brotherhood in order to battle a future threat. Shortly after this, Marie would be killed under mysterious circumstances and would become a wandering spirit trapped on Earth. After hearing of his wife's murder, the Brotherhood of Light would send Gabriel to the Lake of Oblivion, where the spirit of his wife would inform him of the prophecy. Gabriel would eventually learn of a powerful artifact called the God's Mask, which was said to have the power to bring the dead back to life. However, the mask had been broken into three pieces, and it was up to Gabriel to have to defeat the three Lords of Shadows in order to recover the pieces of the mask. After defeating the werewolf Coronel and the vampire Camilla, Gabriel would succeed in collecting two of the pieces and then would travel to the land of the Necromancers where he would recover the final piece completing the mask. But once this had happened, his friend Zobek appeared and he revealed that not only had he been corrupted by the power of Satan the entire time, but it was he who, now who possessed the Devil's Mask, not only used his dark magic to control Zobek, but used his dark magic on Gabriel and used him to kill his own wife. Gabriel would be killed shortly after this possessed Zobek, and he himself would be immediately knocked out by his true master Satan who recovered the God's Mask. After dying, it would be Marie who would convince the spirits of the afterlife to give Gabriel back his life so he could save the world. Gabriel would go on to battle and ultimately defeat Satan, sending him back to hell. Marie's spirit would appear once more and would take the God's Mask with her to heaven. When it comes to Gabriel's arsenal, he wears a complete set of armor with the upper part of his body being covered in layers of thick plates with his legs being covered in ironclad boots. His weapons and equipment are quite vast too. His primary weapon was his combat cross that has been heavily modified with a numerous set of additions. When attacking, Gabriel can release a spiked metal chain that allows the weapon to be effective at all ranges. The end of the chain is equipped with a hook tip that Gabriel can use to either hook onto an opponent and pull them closer, or he can actually use them to move through certain terrains. The bottom of the combat cross is also equipped with a silver stick that is highly effective against all kinds of enemies and adds another weapon that Gabriel can use at close ranges. He also carries a collection of silver daggers that Gabriel can throw with exceptional precision. He also wears a dark gauntlet on his left arm, which is a relic that was forged in hell and allows Gabriel to use a series of powerful close range attacks. He is also equipped with a pair of cyclone boots that grant him the power to move at tremendous speeds. He also wears a set of shoulder pads which allows Gabriel to summon the wings of the Archangel which grants him the power of flight. Now Gabriel also carries more equipment, but these are just the few that I believe will be the most useful in this particular engagement. When it comes to his physical capabilities, he has been trained since childhood, and Gabriel has developed superhuman levels of strength, speed, and senses, as well as developed an advanced level of combat performance. Magically, he has access to both light and chaos magics, as well as the sacred powers granted to him from being the chosen one. So now that we have broken these two down, it is now time to determine which warrior of God would ultimately walk away the winner. And that winner is going to be... Gabriel. Gabriel is going to take the win here for a number of reasons, and quite easily, I must say. On a physical level, though Dante and Gabriel have both shown that they can perform superhuman levels of physical feats, Dante has never shown to be able to perform on the same level as Gabriel, as all of Dante's feats have only been shown once he has successfully weakened his opponents, and on top of that, I find it highly doubtful that Dante could match Gabriel seeing as how Gabriel has spent his entire life fighting all kinds of creatures, monsters, and demons, 
while Dante's feats have only been shown once he entered hell, so there's a little bit of questioning that can be presented on Dante's part. When it comes to their qualities of armor, while both men wear it, it is Gabriel that has been shown to be considerably more useful. Not only does Gabriel cover himself from neck to toe, but portions of his armor actually carry magical properties. And while Dante too wears Crusader armor, the biggest problem for Dante is that he doesn't wear any armor in the chest area, and with that leather red cross sewn into his skin, that is practically an open target area. When it comes to their weapons, not only does Gabriel have more of them, but they are all more practically effective in combat. While Dante's scythe is certainly an effective weapon being able to change length, it is ultimately nothing that Gabriel couldn't deal with, and it is my belief that Gabriel's combat cross is a much more effective weapon at all ranges with different parts built into it. And speaking of crosses, it is unfortunate that Dante's most powerful weapon, that being his cross, is absolutely useless against Gabriel, as Dante's cross is designed to work against demons or punish or absolve the souls of the damned. I find it highly unlikely that it would work at all against another warrior of light. Finally, when it comes to both of these combatants' use of magical abilities, while Dante's collection is various and certainly could help him stay in the fight for a good amount of time, he would be bringing nothing that would allow him to take any amount of control over the fight. Righteous Path is easily avoidable, Sins of the Father certainly could land some hits but it won't be enough to cause any real damage due to how protective Gabriel's armor provides him. Suicide Fruit's stunning ability is avoidable with Gabriel's holy power to fly off the ground. Matadorm can be... Well, to be honest, it's just a dumb ability because why on earth would you sacrifice any of your amount of health to blast any kind of unholy energy, as I just don't see that it's really being very effective. And really, the only effective ability that Dante has in his arsenal that would be of any help would be his divine armor, which would make him immune to all of his attacks. However, this isn't really anything more than a simply delaying tactic. When comparing Dante's magical abilities to Gabriel's, he is simply outclassed in both variety and magnitude. When all is said and done, Dante simply is not the kind of warrior that can present any kind of credible threat to Gabriel, with him being so much more significant of a warrior of light. Now, in Dante's defense, if he were to fight against Gabriel once he became Dracula, then I could certainly see a number of Dante's collection of holy magics being more effective, and his defeat over Lucifer was certainly an incredible accomplishment. But Gabriel has also defeated the devil as a mortal man, and he only became more dangerous and more powerful once he became Dracula, making any kind of fight between Dante against Dracula even more one-sided than this contest would be. I see a fight between Dante and Gabriel playing out like this. Dante would go on the attack first and would charge at Gabriel, and as he attacks, Gabriel easily evades the attack and jumps away to give himself distance. He then pulls out his combat cross and starts swinging the spike chain at Dante, forcing him back. Eventually, the test of strength would take place and Gabriel would be successful in wrapping the spiked chain around the middle of Dante's scythe. Dante holds on tight to his scythe while attempting to hold his ground, but Gabriel, being so much more stronger, pulls the scythe right out of Dante's hands. Now holding the scythe, Gabriel throws it away so Dante can't use it anymore. With no other weapon, Dante pulls out his cross and begins firing a series of holy crosses at Gabriel, but they harmlessly pass through Gabriel's body, showing Dante that he is immune to his holy magic. As Dante circles through all of his magical abilities, each one proves to be less effective than the last, and Dante eventually uses up all of his mana. As Dante attempts to use his cross one more time to activate his divine armor, Gabriel uses his precision to throw a silver dagger striking Dante in the hand, causing him to drop his cross. Gabriel then immediately racks the spike chain around Dante's body, and with him having no armor protecting his back or his chest area, he drops to his knees in excruciating pain. With his scythe gone, his magic depleted, and the cross is holy magic showing to be ineffective, Dante surrenders, ending the fight. I declare Gabriel the Knight of the Brotherhood of Light, the winner. And that concludes my fifth verse series matchup for my final season. I would love to hear your thoughts on my matchup, and do you agree that Gabriel simply outclasses Dante, or do you believe that Dante could somehow pull off the upset? 
Share your thoughts with me and everyone else in the comments down below. And if you like this matchup, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to share it on all your social media outlets to help spread the word. And don't forget to subscribe to keep track of me and all my remaining matchups coming out for the remainder of the year. And as always, I would like to thank you for watching. And now here's a preview of my next Versus Series matchup, as I'll be going back to the very franchise that started my Versus Series, as I'll be presenting my very last Final Fantasy matchup. And I'll be breaking my own rules once again, doing a matchup that I once said was impossible. So please enjoy, and I will see you next time.